Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is me, Duke CT, here, live, once again, as always, here on the Duke CT Lounge, thank you so much for joining me, Duke CT, and we have a lot of things to discuss here, my goodness, we have a lot of stuff to discuss, um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I got a big old plate, so let's get this stuff situated. Let's sit back, relax, and actually get all the news, all the stuff, all the juicy bits here, um, you know, all the stuff here. Remember, if you want to join in the show, remember, you get the chat room unlocked. Also, if you want to, um, you know, not just to chat, uh, you can also... Um, Call in. The number, as always, is 605. No, it is 605-562-0444. Once again, the number is 605-562-0444. Show ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the show ID is 92417. And the PIN is 2249866. And once again, the PIN is 2249866. But if you want to just go in and use the internet, to connect to me, that's cool as well. So you can, there's many ways to connect to this great and interesting program, and I am happy, so happy to um, to be here, to be, uh, to to uh, to actually do well what I do, and <laughs> well, let's get on to the subject at hand. Let's talk about 205 Live. Yeah, I know 205 Live has not really um, shocked the world, has not, well, done things that people would be like, wow, I am so into 205 Live right now. But uh, it hasn't. It hasn't done the thing that a lot of people wish it could have. I wish, me personally, there's a lot of positive things I wish Lucha Underground could do and should do. I wish there was something that they could actually bring into some uh, more, you know, um, you know, way to get the cruiserweights into the show. I would love to see the cruiserweights do more things, but sadly, right now, it's just uh, not good. Right now, people, you know, there's no real reason to watch the show, and it's getting to the point that you had to manage, like you had two or five general managers during Mavericks now managing. Um, uh, the um, AOP, Authors of Pain, and then you have Leo Rush <laughs> is now being the hype man and manager of Bobby Lashley. And very interesting to see that. I mean, the last time we saw Cruz Race in any function on Raw was like a tag match or something between Cedric Alexander and um, I believe um, Mustafa Ali. That was the only things there. And I see the chat room. Uh, what's up, uh, guest two? How you doing? Remember, chat room's always on lock. When you know, when I talk about 205 Live or anything else um, later on in the show, we will get to that soon. Uh, and it's very, um, you know, it's very. Uh, you know, I look back at this is, um, um. Uh, I look back at 205 Live because there's so much potential, so many good stars there, and now it's being moved from, well, after SmackDown to before SmackDown and taped there. It's not live anymore. It's being taped to get bumped for the Mixed Match Challenge uh, Season 2, which I honestly think is pretty good. It's a nice little thing and gives the character, they actually have characters and, you know, the wrestlers, the, 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 the guys and the gals get character development it's actually pretty cool to see some really good characters seeing this stuff on the i mean come on this is like i love that oh it's rowdy on the uh guest uh list and everything remember you can uh use um the internet to connect to the, uh, the stuff here uh that's the last i checked um you can do that you can also use the um <clears throat> use uh the um uh, you can use the uh, the internet to uh, connect and call in. So to do that and the number. So just in case you can uh, call in about that. But yeah, um, again, this is 205. I think 205 live moving is a good thing. I think they need to. I think they 
quite honestly, I don't know what to do with 205 Live. I would say to keep it around, but people just are not really into it. It seems like the 205 Live, since its premiere, was it got off and off. In fact, their champion wasn't even on the first, when they were like moved to Monday Night Raw, it was like the champion's going to be, and he wasn't there. He was just, you know, they did a four-way with people who just, no one cared. There was no character introduction. They were just, okay, just have a good match. I'm like, that's the, that's the death knell. No one had a reason to care. And by the time they did get a 205 Live match and, and doing things like, uh, you know, all these type of things, it was way too late to keep the care. Enzo got people to care a little bit, but the stick got old and then all the stuff that happened in there. <laughs> uh, outside the ring, so they couldn't really continue with that. So, and then Neville, well, he wanted to go and um, grow and leave the division, but the WWE didn't want him to do so, so he just sat there, did nothing, and now going to uh, probably, I think he's asked for his release or something, so he's pretty much gone. So, I look at 205 Live, and... I just don't see any interest. The only people who are interesting is Leo Rush when I see him. And Drew Gulak was interesting, which is power purposes. Now he's just Blandy McBland Bland. And Shelly Alexander, I liked in Ring of Honor, but man, he is just white bread, white bed, boring, and not interesting as champion. So here's hoping Buddy Murphy actually wins the title for him because his title reign has just been. To say it's flat would be just a, <laughs> would be just, you know, it would be an understatement. It's just, there's nothing really good or anything interesting on 205 Live. Hmm, he says he thought, mm-hmm. yeah, and th- th- that's what they should do. I think they're moving to earlier would be a great, is a great thing to get people more excited. But right now, they have no incentive to care to these characters. I mean, and another thing about the Kills 205 Live is that you have people on the main roster doing the same damn stuff. Heck, why is Finn Balor not competing in the Cruiserweight division? He he seems to be right there, that, that, that weight and everything, so why is he not competing in it? Why is he not competing in the in this match? And not the matches, but also in that division. Why is he not competing in the division? That's the question here. The reason why, the answer, and the answer to that question, boys and girls, is because they realize that the vision is is a is pretty much a dead zone. That's what this division is. It's a dead zone. A is it is a dead zone for 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 um <clears throat> it is a dead zone to any type of uh, any athlete and anything interesting. The only thing you can become interesting is basically have to come in and actually do something good to do something to actually um you know come in and do some stuff to uh um, to build stuff because i done this yeah oh you're working on a video that's hey that's a-okay man you got you know your video um that's all right pop in and out of the video working on hey i got stuff i need to do too uh this uh secret agent clank is kicking my butt but also school and life so i am going to be uh, I'm hopefully get some more recording done tonight. Then I'm going to be going to uh, do some lots and lots of studying and lots of stuff with math and numbers. So that's going to be really fun for me. Ooh, this week. It's going to be the rest of this week. It's going to be you know, a little bit of recording, doing editing for this video when I get this up and pretty much just hope, I just hope that everything just continues to um uh, just work out. That's that's the game. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. That is the plan to um, to really hopefully work have everything here work out. That's my hope. That is something I really hope everything just starts to work out in the end. That's the thing. But yeah, 205 Live needs this stuff. I think it should move to full sale and just honestly, um, I say I think there is some good stuff in 205 Live, but Right now, I think the best thing to do, which I said year, uh, months ago, heck, I said it last year, and I'll keep saying it, they need to kill 205 Live. It's a waste of time, energy, and product, uh, and, and time, energy, and the wrestler's time. Just put them over on SmackDown, put some in NXT, um, do something with them other than just put them in the Cruiserweight division and just say, oh, yeah, these guys are not really engaging. And by the way, turn, okay, 
you have to get, by the way, before get J Gallagher, by the way, gentlemen, Jack, give him back his face turn, please. He was interesting as a baby face. He was the most interesting dude on that roster, and now he's just bland, uninteresting. Give him something to do instead of just wasting his time. I liked him. I did. I liked. Ugh. I, I, I liked. I liked. I really did. I really liked uh, Jack Gallagher. I really liked him. I think he was really good. I think that he was the, I thought he was a really big star. But instead, yeah, he's just now, he's just a dude. I mean, it's the same. And, you know, um, I know Riley C's here, and he's probably popping in and popping out, but I guarantee he's going to talk about this one. The Rusev Day breakup. Ooh, boy, yes. <laughs> I knew this was coming because WE just... For whatever reason, I don't know why. I don't know what is their plans. I don't know what they do. What is their whole, uh, um, this, 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 uh, this whole rigmarole thing and, uh, uh, you know, this rigmarole. I don't get it. I don't, I, I, you know, it just seems like it's just a back and forth, ladies and gentlemen, with these, uh, with the, uh, the audience. The WWE seems to have a, um, its type of, Toxic relationship between uh, re between rest uh, between the the fan base and the company. That how dare you? You know how dare you actually take something away from us? Or how? I mean, this is what the story is. And I'm like, man, you know, the fans seem to like Rusev Day. They did. They like uh, Aiden English. I mean, he rebounded after the whole Val villains. It seems like he was doing good. Hmm. And it seems that this antagonistic uh, na na uh, nature, but you know, that's my, my thing, is that this antagonistic nature of the WWE and its fan base, it's not good for everyone. It's not a good thing to have this antagonistic relationship between fans and between, uh, you know, and the, the, the customer, the consumer of the product, and then you. And that, to me, is one of the main reasons why um, that, you know, some people just stop watching. Not only stop watching, but stop going. But it seems like the WWE just seems to don't care about that. They don't care. And the reason why they don't care, ladies and gentlemen, is because, hey, they got the billion-dollar deals. They have all this stuff. But, hey, who cares about good storytelling? Who cares about um, on uh, friendships and such? I keep pointing to Lucha, Ring of, uh, to Lucha, uh, Lucha Underground. I mean, Lucha Underground uh, has Aerostar and Drago. Those two have a, I say it, and I said it, and I'll say it again, the best friendship in professional wrestling. They have this connection with the people, and I just, you know, it, to a point, you're just like, why can't this, this indie or whatever uh, thing is here gets it, but why, why do they just continue to uh, have this, uh, this, have this type of, adversarial relationship this adversarial relationship with this company and with the people around here and that to me is the reason why people are like you look at um, Charlotte and Becky the Becky Lynch is supposed to be the villain and heel but WE fans are not booing her they are completely going all in on um, you know all in um, of, of Becky Lynch. They like her. And and Charlotte, who's fine, but she's just way out of death. People just don't like her and everything else. They, they turned on her. And it, it just seems that there is no real, um, again, friendships lost, but it seems that the fan base, the WE fan base, the universe has been 
uh, very, very, uh, the word, what's a good word, ladies and gentlemen, uh, well, rebellious, as it were, to these uh, storylines. They just seem that they are so rebellious and so loud and frustrated. They, they just want this, 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 uh, these characters to grow and actually be like, yes, the characters have some type of meaning. Yes, the characters actually do something. That, that is what is is missing. That is something I think a lot of people um, seem to, you know, seem to have this, uh, this, this thing here. I think that that's the problem. I think that's the real issue. And that's the problem is that that lack of, you know, I think the storytelling has failed. Not just the storytelling has failed, but also... The, the way that the storytelling has failed and the lack of, uh, the real just lack of just, uh, of, of just good story, uh, storytelling, but also good characters, good things, and that lack of trust. I mean, they don't have the same level of trust as, say, a Marvel Studios, which we'll talk a little bit later. Like, you know, I talk, look, look at Marvel Studios. People look at the um, the trailer for Captain Marvel. And some people are if and on, but they still have faith in Marvel to keep up because they have a, 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 a smashing record of success. What is that for WWE? Whenever they have a good storyline, fans don't have this, like, trustworthy stuff. They don't. Like, what about Lucha Underground? Any type of turn they do... Well, we'll get into what happened this this episode later on. We there is that lack. There is a not like, but a, a true trust one. They say they they trust them. Uh, they trust the story and trust where it's going. Here in in WE, they don't trust the storyline. They don't trust it, and they just they they hate the fact when they break up these teams that people like. It seems like just misery. There's a lot of misery. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of just people are just like. You know, it's not fun watching. And there's some fun parts of it, but it seems that there's a lack a lack of fun watching it. And that's why I mean, for all of its sins, All In got a lot of this right. Heck, Impact Wrestling seems it's getting there in some places, but overall, I think they do have this uh, uh, you know, more fun to watch in that uh, arena. That is pretty much what the uh, issue is. Lack of trust, lack of um, a way of actually people can uh, connect with the audience, connect with the characters, and connect with everything here around the, the, the you know, in the WWE universe. But that's just my personal opinion. We will, um, you know, I want to hear yours via comments, via comment uh, down below on the, you know, in the uh, you know, video YouTube uh, over at uh, the YouTube uh, dot com uh, slash Duke CT uh, Big Shoot uh, and uh, let's see where else oh Man Expression and Freaking Awesome Network I will put that stuff up and man like I said this is just that was the first part of the show so we gotta keep going ladies and gentlemen we're gonna keep grinding here the grinder everyone here uh, we're gonna go and uh, talk a little about some Marvel news there's some big Marvel news everybody we're going to talk, to, uh, talk about Marvel. Yes, there's going to be some interesting stuff here. Uh, there are going to be two heroes, two Marvel heroes, are going to get their own TV shows on the Disney streaming service starting. That is going to happen next year. Well, we will be uh, talking about that. And, um, and uh, more after we have a small little break here let's have some uh, music from let's see what will be a good music for some heroic action some success. so let's talk a little about for another hero um that has um you know see uh, uh let's see sonic oh yeah sonic he's a hero you, you know let's talk a little something a little sonic here let's talk a little uh let's uh, play a little uh sonic uh, from um, uh, from an OC remix, speeding towards adventure. Twenty five years of Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, let us play some. Let's see, Trouble in Watertown, Sonic the Hedgehog three by Yama Yama. Yeah, that's a nice name. Uh, anyway, we'll be uh right 
back after this. And you are listening live, everyone, here on the Duke CT Lounge. <laughs> we are you're listening live on Duke on TalkShoe.com here on Talks on. We also on iTunes. We're almost at downloads to over forty we're almost at forty thousand downloads. Um keep on downloading, keep sharing, liking it, all the stuff here, ladies and gentlemen. With that being said, let's uh, let's listen to this music and we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for act to well uh, to downloading, sharing, and do all the stuff that everyone has done so much. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we are. Let me just look here at the downloads right now. We're at thirty-seven thousand two hundred and ninety-five downloads. Man, we are close to forty thousand downloads, and I don't know, maybe I should get a big time guest. Maybe I'll get a big time guest. If we have 40,000 downloads, uh, I'll see if I can get a guest. Heck, I might get, try to get more guests here on the Duke CT Lounge, um, you know, soon and uh, make this as a more of a, because again, I think this is a really good, uh, very positive uh, uh, place here. The, the Duke CT Lounge is a nice, positive place, a good place. And you know what else? Who else is in a good place, in a positive place? Now? Disney. Um, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because there have been a really good stuff here, and now uh, they're trying to dip their, dip their hands in the in the streaming server, which has been well known for a couple for a couple years, and it's going to be um completely um will be um launching in the late 2019 next year, and ladies and gentlemen, we are having not one but two shows, and two Marvel shows is going to involve Loki. And Scarlet Witch, yes, Loki, and Scarlet Witch, which is odd because that's not really the two people I. W- I mean, Loki. I mean, Tumblr is probably losing their mind right now because, well, Loki is. I don't know if he still is like that. That heartthrob everyone loved back in 08 and not not way, but like when Thor came out, he well was really you know loved and everyone else here that sort of thing. I, I'm. I bet the. I bet there's still some fangirls out there that still love them some. Tom, uh, the love, love, um, Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> but Elizabeth Olsen, Scarlet Witch is uh, interesting. I don't know what they're going to do, um, uh, with them uh, being here. It, it is a big step. Like wow, it's going to be like six to eight episodes. According to Ryan, link will be in the description. Uh, they said um, they're going to be played by Tom Hiddleston and Elizabeth Olsen. Um, there's it's going to be the cost of the pro- uh, the program. It's going to probably cost a pretty penny um, since it's like they said it's going to rival those of major studio productions. The episodes are going to be eight, six to eight episodes, and and the, and the Marvel Studios head. Kevin Feige is going to take a hands-on role of development, which I think that is a good thing. I think there's actually he has credibility, he has clout. He knows what the Marvel formula works, and that's what he's doing. But my problem is this: is that this could really I don't want him to have the burnout because this stuff, man, 
you know, you can only manage so many plates until eventually, you know, it starts falling off. That's my worst fear is that it will eventually start to fall off. And once those plates start to lose the spin, like, oh, we got it. Nope, nope, nope. You don't get it. You don't got it. And next thing it'll start falling off. So it starts with the TV shows, these shows here on Marvel, uh, the stuff that is going to be held by the MCU. It might, and this stuff could be a trend that night eventually gets to the movies. If that thing goes down, whew, that's it. That's it. We're done. Um, but I, hopefully that's not going to happen. And another thing that's a problem is the Netflix TV shows. Um, uh, there's, um, what are they going to do with those? Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, and, and, uh, because, again, Netflix has, you know, again, they have uh, the movies, but they're going to continue to have these big deals, big shows to, uh, big shows with, uh, show talent like, uh, Ryan Murphy from American Horror Story, uh, Ken, Kenya, uh, Burris from Blackest, Sonya Rhimes, Grey's Anatomy, and all this stuff to their platform, so, What's Disney going to draw more talent? Because they do have a lot of talent in house to to well uh, appease the mouse. But right now it's um but yeah, I mean the um and the article continues is uh the Marvel series are only in development and writers have yet to be attached to the projects. Marvel TV studios and Disney have been active with shows that include ABC's Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Netflix Daredevil, but sources say those shows will stay under the Marvel TV banner with these limited series set under Marvel Studios, so they're going to be completely separate from Ike Perlmutter and Marvel TV and such. Um, and what are they going to... But my question is, um, what are they going to do? Because... Um, Um, are you going to have TV shows with other uh, uh, Avenger characters? But rumor has it that they said the insiders are stressed that Avengers that got them in movies like Iron Man and Captain America will not be featured in the series. There are studios focused on characters who are served second tier. This is going to be just say, you know, you know, people in the the backup roles. They're going to get their own, you know, spotlight. I'm happy about this. I, I think this could be really good. And we don't know what's going to um, what's going to actually be, um, something, uh, that is going to connect to the, uh, audience. Cause again, it's going to be really hard to really, um, um, you know, something that really connects with the audience and get a streaming service. Cause again, you have not just Netflix, you have, uh, Amazon, you have Hulu, um, and lesser case of, you know, yeah, Yahoo, not yeah, but y YouTube, uh, you know, you have all the other streaming services out there, um, you know, Twitch you know, for gaming. So I don't think they have shows on it, but you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, they have very much streaming sites. Um, and also DC Universe just launched, and I think they're going to have a lot more content out the gate. Well, they was first, and maybe their shows are going to start having momentum, and if their shows like say a Titans that start off badly but gets momentum or and, and like Doom Patrol and Swamp Alright, okay, uh We're back. Uh something happened. Skype dropped. Of course it did, because Lord knows it always happens this way, you know. Skype always does the thing that just uh, it's you know, that sort of thing. Always screws up. But we're back, we're here, we're live. Anyway, um I like I said this stuff back to the point of um, of Disney and the streaming service again, like streaming service like the DC service with um, with um, you know like Doom Patrol uh, and uh, Swanton, which I'm I'm I have really high hopes on. I think that's going to be really good. People just I think it's going to I think Titans is going to be at best lukewarm. I think they they really heard the negative feedback and. I've got Titans get a season two. They're going to do a massive, like, you know, they're going to do something really massive to do some show shifting. And maybe it could be like an Iron Fist situation. My hope is that, like, it's decent, but, like, you know, the first season's decent. Then the second season is like, wow, this is a lot better, like Iron Fist. Uh, that sort of thing. So, 
you know, here's hoping. But anyway, we'll be. Uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, that sort of thing. So, you know, here's hoping. Yeah, here's hoping, ladies and gentlemen. That's the hope, and and that's how we. Uh, you know, that's what I think it's going to be the major story here. A lot you look here, everyone. So, just trust me. Uh, I think this is going to be something big. I think it's going to be good overall. A little bit of competition. And I don't know what the stories are going to be about, what Loki's going to do. I don't know what uh, Scarlet Witch is going to do. I don't know what these two characters are going to have. Or who are they going to be there? Because the writers, they haven't done anything yet. Or are they going to have more characters? Are they going to have things even more? Are they going to cross over? Are they going to bring the, the, net, the stuff from uh, the Netflix stuff to the Disney streaming service? Or are they gonna still going to be there? Are they going to be competing against each other? These are questions that um, I you know we got to sit and wait and see to, to pop up. So... That being said, um, heck, will DC keep getting more elves? Because DC seems to be losing more and more ground to Marvel at this point. I hope not, because I think um, I'm hopeful that this thing will, um, you know, DC will get their, you know, revenge, uh, you know, get their stuff back together. Hopefully, Walter Hamada does says he has a plan, so here's hoping this plan works. Anyway. We're gonna take a, you know, back. You know what? The, but back to the point. I think uh, Marvel Heroes. This stuff here is a good idea. I think again, a good idea, but sometimes a little bit bad idea. We don't know how this is going to. Again, we have to wait and see. I hope this is well. I hope it's good. I hope this is not going to overstress Kevin Feige, because uh, TV is a different creature than movies. And uh, hopefully this will be a very positive experience because, uh, cause, well, you know, if it doesn't, let's just say there's not going to be any more. Um, you're gonna only, the only time we're going to see Marvel stuff on TV is probably going to be on ABC, uh, the Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the stuff on Netflix. Well, and, you know, that's probably what's going to happen if things don't go well enough, so... Anyway, um, we're going to take a small break, and after that, we are going to finally get into Lucha Underground, the season uh, four, and how everything changed. It was what this is going to be, um, what show, and a, a very positive change, a very interesting change. So let's start something with a little bit of excitement, and let's see. Let's see, what would be a good, exciting little track? Let's play something from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. How about, uh, let's see, Rock the Plank, Skull and Crossbones, my so intro theme uh, for this season of Last of Your Standing. I believe that will be a great way to pump things up. So, all right, let's, uh, we want to hear it, ladies and gentlemen. So, here we are. Thank you so much for joining me, Duke CT here live on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for being here, taking your stuff and, uh, you know, all the crazy stuff that's going on. So sit back, relax, listen to some nice music here on the Duke CT Lounge and, um, you know, live on TalkShoe.com and one of these days I'm going to get rid of these Skype. But today is not that day. So today we're just going to sit back and listen to some music to calm each other down to not calm each other down to get us pumped up as we listen to Rock the Plank Skull and Crossbones with Steamage featuring Viking Guitar here live on the Duke CT Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching, joining me, listening, doing everything you can to keep me here live on the Dixie Lounge. Thank you so much for being here. And um, again, humbled and appreciative to every little thing you have um, who, who had to, to stay here and be a part of this great, great podcast. Uh, you know, I think this is a great podcast, and I love that you have great fans who have downloaded this thing so many times. So I am humbled, and thank you for 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 every single download. If I got one download to thirty, a fifty, hundred thousand, two thousand, two twenty, thirty, or whatever, I'm just happy someone's listening. I'm just happy someone's actually sitting there saying this is actually really good. So I'm humbled, and I thank you, and I love all of you. Uh huh. So yeah. <laughs> so out of the way, let's get into Lucha on the Ground, and let me do my review of Lucha on the Ground season four, episode fifteen, The Hunted. Now let's get into this. As the first match is Phoenix versus Aerostar. Phoenix and Aerostar have a pretty really high energy matchup as Phoenix is still well not himself after coming back from the dead this well darker Phoenix yeah <laughs> um is basically you know screaming this this athletic type of zombie if you will but not to pick just he just is not there and Aerostar, who, well, caused this calamity, thank you, time travel and, well, energy and everything else, unless that's part of his plan, or maybe it wasn't part of his plan, or anything else, that means that he's playing one heck of a long game, as Aerostar and Phoenix, like I said, had a really good match, just, just kicking, hitting these nice little moves at each other, but at the end of the day, Phoenix... Hits this nice move called the Black Fire Driver, a muscle buster to just just power drive move to pick up the victory. And after the match, Phoenix just beats down Aerostar like he's punishing him. He is punishing him for we like sitting and punishing him for we don't know what it is. And looks like he's uh, just just angry and screaming and such. But then Melissa wants Phoenix to stop. And it seems like at first he's, he, he, he is listening to her. But then she grabs her. And then, well, El Dragon Azteca comes in. And, well, <laughs> a you know, well, being, you know, being a good person in the temple is not always the best thing. Because Phoenix, well, doesn't uh, take well to that. As he just beats the crap out of them. And then um, hits the Blackfire Driver right onto the floor. Just right onto the concrete, right in front of Melissa, and just looks like that was it for Dragon Azteca for a long while. But then the second match, as looked like um, Antonio Cueto was gonna have to match like go uh, because because this was a gift of God's match. Uh, if he is the gift of the God's champion, he has to have the title. But no. Yeah, it looks like, you know, it looks like Antonio's like, no, I'm sorry, we can't have you face, we can't have you fight uh, this match, we can't have you um, fight here, we by force it, but no, he says, no, I want to fight, I want to fight, but here he, but here he is, he wants to fight. And he says, you really are a champion. But then he, Gary is, is Marty DeMarco Martinez in this new look. He's not even looking at, and you know what the difference is? He's not looking at um, Melissa. He's focused, 100% focused. And this match was pretty much a, well, some would say a squash or whatever. But it just, you know, but Aztec actually made it interesting. He met, he kept hitting these nice uh, moves and, um, uh, just continue just uh, you know, doing those nice big um, just aerial assaults. But at the end of the day, wasn't enough. As Martinez hits, uh, as Demario Damov takes down Dragon Azteca. 
with the brain Buster to pick up the victory. And the funny thing is, ironically, Martin Amoff Martinez wins the Gift of the Gods title thanks to his, well, former main rival, Phoenix. Huh. Huh, funny thing there. Hmm. Anyway. We get to the nice segment as Paul London plays visit to the White Rabbit, who is um, <clears throat> known as the Killer Cross. And he's like, look at that, where are the two other members of the Rabbit Tribe? And he's still, he looks like he's not pleased. He looks bored. He looks restless. But he's like, but Paul London says, both Salator and Melsorte failed the tribe, and then they were fed to Matanza. And he's like, "No, no, no." And he's like, um, <clears throat> all right, "And I'm back." But yes, Paul London visits the right. Like I said, Paul London talking and doing all this stuff. But yet, he's not the white rabbit as well. Pretty bored, as he and his associate. Who was only in that, well, cage. Says he needs to go to the temple. <laughs> it looks like he's going to be in the temple. So the White Rabbit, the leader of the White Rabbit is, well, he's coming to the temple with Paul London as his guide. So it looks like the White tri Rabbit tribe is <laughs> uh, going to be a lot more interesting. A lot more interesting. And see what's going to happen to these, you know, this interesting trio. But is this the end of Mel Shote and Salador? Who knows? Who knows? But now let's get to our, well, main event of the evening. As it is a triple threat match between Pentagon Dark, the champion, as Mil Mertes, Land of a Thousand Deaths, and the Hunter. King Cuerno with a three-way dance which got on title. This was, well, a very good three-way. Nothing like, oh my gosh, great, because, you know, again, it just was like, really, it was a really good match. I thought it was good. Um, I think it was lacking in some ways. I thought if it was a little bit longer, I think it would have been really good, if not great. But for what it was, it was really, I think it was pretty uh, decent tr uh, three-way. Both, uh, all three members had their, their time to sign. Uh, but at the end of the day, <laughs> uh, Pentagon, uh, Pentagon Dark hits the package power dryer on Quino to pick up the victory. Then, out of nowhere, Monty Namal Martinez attacks Pentagon from behind. And then after he hits him, then he just knocks him out for... He knocks it out for the, um, well, knocks him out with the Lucha Underground title. But then Antonio Credo says, we talked about this, like this little, me by the way, he this was the little interesting no nugget that was missing from last week's show, this last segment. It was, he and Marty Moff, like, you know, we the Pentagon, the whole wait a week for, you know, if after cashing in, you know what, that's pretty stupid. So, if you want to challenge a champion, you could do it anytime, any place. So, guess what? Pentagon Dark is the, the true main event, ladies and gentlemen. That's Pentagon defending his money with Demar Martinez. And, well, at first, the Pentagon Dark was getting pummeled and hammered. But he came back as he hits this nice little boom. This nice little sunflip power bomb to take some uh, Pentagon. You know, Pentagon hits this nice little sunflip uh, power bomb to take down Martinez. But then... Next thing you know, yeah, Chelsea Green. If you don't know who she is, she is the former uh, Impact Wrestling Champion, Law Von Ness. She came out to the crowd and kicked Pentagon in the balls, Dick Kick City, and then did a nice, well, Canadian destroyer or Mexican destroyer or whatever you want to call it on Pentagon and then Monty Lamar Martinez plants Pentagon with the package power driver to pick up the victory and thus in one night Mario Martinez not only wins the gift of the gods but cashes in 
the gift of the gods, uh, um, you know, the opportunity to win the Lucha Underground Champion. So one night he has now won one title, but also two, as now Lucha Underground Champion is the Mario DeMarf Martinez. Holy crap! What a very interesting uh, turn of events, and looks like um, um, Chelsea and Marty are going to have an interesting relationship. So that's going to be fun down the line. So. Um, and um, since he's, you know, the champion, what's going to happen with the Gift of the Gods tournament? Gift of the Gods, what's going to happen here? Um, you know, Dragon's Tester failed, thanks to Phoenix, so I think that's going to be a feud down the line. Um, what's going to happen? Who's going to be the next person up? I think mean, Jake Strong looks like he's going to probably be the next guy up um, to challenge, and because uh, he's still undefeated, so you don't know who's going to be the new uh, to challenge these guys uh, hell, hell, maybe, um, you know, Evil Lease will, you know, get a shot to challenge a belt soon. Who knows? But at this point, then I guess he's going to be, uh, tagging with Joy Ryan and, um, Exo Lisa. So that might be out of the question, but who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But that's going to be at something, uh, interesting as well. So it looks like, um, Lucha Underground is going to be, is now at the top of the mountain. Who on Lucha Underground is Marty DeMoff Martinez. Someone said they said they never thought we'd see this day, but it's happened. And there's a lot of people who are Mar uh, Moth Fats or Moth the Moths or whatever fans. They wanted this, and well, congratulations, you got it. As Marty DeMoff Martinez is your Lucha Underground champion. Took a while, but he got there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he got there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is over to Duke City Lounge. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sticking around and all that stuff and Skype dropping because Lord knows Skype and everything else is just going to screw me everything because that's what he does. It always has and always will. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I take my leave. So um, it's Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all later.